Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So I'm here with Wizard today. We're taking a look at one of his rovers that has been present pretty much since the beginning on the Mad Max server. There's been lots of different variants of it. It's changed things up. It's a combination or a hybrid, you could say, of both large and small grids. But the question we're going to try to answer, as well as take a look at this rover today, is what makes a good rover on the Mad Max server? So, Wizard, tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind this rover to start with, or the, a bit of the advanced thinking, you could say. Uh, okay, then. I needed a rover that could do a bit of everything. Something that's mobile, something that's quick, and can traverse the terrain regardless of what's going on with a reasonable amount of um, certainty that it'll be able to do the job. And this all stemmed from the big wheels being useless, didn't it, wasn't it? The, the big ship wheels. Yeah, I've, I've, I've built big stuff, um, mobile bases, HQ stuff, um, with various different configurations, multiple wheels. And one thing that I've noticed between large and small grid wheels is as the wheels get bigger, their ability is reduced. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the smaller wheels, they seem to be lighter, but they seem to have more ability. They've got more traction, they've got more traction, they've got more torque. And more importantly, they're able to deal with heavy loads easier because you can have more wheels than what you would on a large grid. Well, Without the we, whole grid getting massive. Well, what we've seen here from this one is that you can obtain a maximum amount of speed. You can even jump this rover um, to quite a considerable height, and the suspension is tough enough to actually land. So before we go move on from the wheels and we actually talk about the design itself, the final thing we wanted to quickly talk about is wheel damage and pieces of scrap getting stuck inside your wheels. You, do you want to quickly explain was why the why this isn't necessarily a good thing? Well, yeah, I noticed um, it, it's been going on for a while. I got sick and tired of wheels popping all the time and I couldn't figure out why. But these welders that are currently on the actual rig, they're not plumbed in. They've got nothing in them. But every now and again, when I'm on the server, they'll spark up. And I was just checking randomly through the infantry, and they're actually starting to fill up with scrap metal. Mm -hmm. And I suspect what's going on is, as the wheels take damage when you're roaming around the terrain, they're generating scrap metal. And if it's not removed from the wheel, it clangs inside. It, it does something with the actual the grid itself, and it eventually just blows itself up. So basically, the piece of scrap is stuck on the inside of the tyre, bouncing around yeah. and most likely just rips the tyre apart and the, the, the contact between them two bits is causing the damage. But anyway, let's actually start and have a look at the rover itself. So up front, you have a unique drilling system and the whole purpose, I believe, of you, your, your sort of survival on the server is to stay roaming, not build a base, if that's correct. Yep. So we've got the drill for two reasons, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's going to collect you a lot of stone that you can do with resources. Is there any other reason for it? Um, yeah, it can dig itself hideouts. It can dig itself a trench to hide in. Um, do, you want to, do you want to get in it and have a fire the drill up and talk about some of the drill's features for us? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, let's see. We've got a nice embankment over on the right there where the submarine is, so if you wanted to speed up your drilling process, you could also test it out on that. So it's quite cool. How Wizard actually accessed this, this ship is a, a, a sneaky little ladder under here. That's pretty damn cool. I know I'm spoiling all your secrets, Wizard. But I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping with the inspiration from this build that the players on the server can, you know, advance their own creations on a few steps. You firing it up? Are you moving it about? Yeah, this thing's ready to go. So as you uh, move it into position, would you like just to explain a little bit about the gyroscopic stabilization system that you built for this drill? That is, that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's pretty much what you've done. There is no gyro. Is it? No well, gyro. well, you've got the gyros on the the hinge, haven't you? So isn't it measuring? Uh, isn't it kind of a gyroscopic stabilizer in a, to a degree? I, what it is, it's a reference point. So, mm -hmm. to we'll get ourselves, like you said, into position. Because it's like I thought it worked a bit like a spirit level. It is. It is effectively like a spirit level, but it's separate from the main grid, so it'll always stay at whatever angle it's set to. Mhm. Mm so, in fact, I'll show you it. 
So when you're when you're in the controls themselves, do you just do you set the angle first on the override so you, you can decide where it goes to? Nope. Um, at the moment, the piston, the the, the rotor is locked. Mm -hmm. So that if I move the arm up, it'll move up with it. See, so it, it just does its thing. Yeah. But as soon as I unlock that little tiny uh, uh, rotor there, which I'll do now, it starts to oscillate. Okay, so if I move my camera down to the side, you can see how it how it's bouncing up and down. Is that because the sensors are detecting it on each of these little? Yeah, each sensor. Um, you should be able to see it actually if you go into your info and. Uh, I can see it from the outside functioning sure. in here, pretty well to be fair. Um, do you want to fire it up and get drilling anyhow? Yeah, sure. Okay. So where are we? So we've been seeing a lot of trenches on the map itself. Now, not all of them are, are your work, but you can tell when Wizard's been drilling a trench because it's so smooth. I mean, the way it goes in and out, you can pretty much hide your rover in there at a pinch if you need it to. Yeah, it's, um, I'm just lowering the suspension because one thing that you need to do is make sure all the wheels are back so you get the maximum uh, contact on the ground. Okay, we got this nice little track rolling thing. It's quite fast at digging itself a hole as well. That's what I was originally quite surprised about. Is yeah, it, it, it does a it does an okay job. I believe we should be going there just a slightly. Open. So you're going to build a, a gentle slope up here. Right, so there we go. That's a little bit of an example of what this drill can do. And we using the stabilization feature, or are we slowly raising it then? No, nope, that's doing it all by itself. So you basically built yourself a ramp, so if there's a piece of terrain you can't get through, or alternatively, a giant mountain. And what's also quite cool at this, he can build it at an angle itself, so he could build a spiral downwards if he really wanted to for some reason. Um, so we've, we've had a brief look at the drills. Is there anything else you wanted to cover on the drill before we move on to the rest of the, um, the structure? Mm, not really. I mean, they are piped in. So if I need to, for example, the uh, there's a there's a boulder next to us of cobalt. So if I come across anything like that and I need it, I can take that straight in from the front, get it all processed. All right. Well, do you, want, do you want to head back to the construction area with the rover and park it up next to the, the the disassembly versions that we've got? So we've also got a variety of smaller turrets here on the side that we can see. So they're just firing basic ammunition, nothing too special on that. But with the large grid, small grid hybrid, it does allow Wizard to actually use them. But just look at the maneuverability he's got as he moves through there. I find it really beautiful, you know, to see the wheels. Uh, is it jostling up and down over the, the sort of terrain as it moves? It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, your little cockpit's protected by a little bit of glass. You've got the two spotlights here on the front. We've got the turret to cover, as well as the internal mechanism and how he's connected the small and large grid. Um, so let's go over that for the next stage. How, how, just how do you connect up a small and large grid in a stable manner? Uh, trial and error, but what I found works really, really well is depends on your setup, and it's down to your preference and space you've got to work with. But mm -hmm. in this particular occasion, I have gone with an advanced piston, uh, not piston, an advanced rotor head attached to a refinery because it's one of the strongest blocks that I have. So there you go. You can and see that there, but you've also built up a backup system, haven't you? Yeah. So the head is just half of it. The body is actually a small advanced body. So if we and come I over use... here to the split grid system, we might be able to see this a little bit better, might we? Yeah. So we've, this is this is his actual chassis here, made of the blast door armor blocks. Here at the rear point is where it's connection pieces to the large car container. And you, the concept behind this, if I understand this correctly, is if that point gets shot off for any reason, it drops into this shell, and you can reattach it at a later date. Yeah. So these these multiple levels of engineering here that are very quite very interesting indeed so we've got the actual shell here you can see we've got the refinery tucked in below and that's what drops into that exoskeleton is there anything more to add about the the connection points i don't really think there is uh, is it it's, it's an actual usable connection point so you can pass large and small items through it as well so it's it's not just you know a means of to an end it, it does actually have a functional purpose 
so we've took it up under this side, as I said before, on the on the real one. Let's go. Let's go back to the real one because I, these get these guys are confusing me. Now we're on the inside of this. This particular layout is very functional, isn't it, Wizard? To be fair, I tried to make it functional. Yeah, very There's functional. No... There's no fancy bits. There's spare seats. You just hang on here. The cockpit's down yeah. here. Yeah, ev ev everything that's important is heavily defended. Mm -hmm. And everything that needs to be accessible is accessible. More importantly, though, there's nowhere on the ship that we can't get to. Or should I say the road, but we can't get to. We can repair anything, anywhere, regardless. And that's critical. When you have no jetpack, um, you need to be able to get to every single location on the ship. Now, you were explaining to me before about the, why there was two med bays. And originally, I thought it was because one might get hit. And But you've got this interesting trading concept with the med bays. Yeah, if, uh, for example, we're going to do a raid or we're under attack, for example, and we need backup, um, we can actually assign that med bay to whoever it is that can respond to us and we'll be able to spawn them in, give them whatever weapons and ammunition they need, and then they can take part in the battle. So whilst, whilst I'm roaming around with my teammates or whatever, if there's anybody else bored or they just want a bit of PvP action, mm -hmm. we can literally just send out uh, an SOS and hand over a med bay to them, to that particular faction, and they can all just spawn over. Very no nice. time wasted. I see, I like I like that idea. I like the idea of being able to call for backup. I even thought before that you could do a little trailer that you could drop off and call in for some angry grinder men if you wanted. <laughs> um, but let's uh, let's have a look at this turret. Now, this turret has scared and probably murdered quite a few people on the server, hasn't it, until it got shot off the other day? Yeah, I've just quickly uh, rebuilt it today, so it's not 100%, but the gist of it's there. Yeah, so it's not 100%. He's missed off some armour in some areas, I believe, as well, haven't you? Yeah. So, if you want to take control of this, this is fully remote control from both inside the ship and if you're away from it. So, for instance, you couldn't get back to your ship, you could still get on the turret, couldn't you, wizard? Yeah, it, uh, there is an antenna on the ship. Uh, I keep saying ship, why am I doing that? Ship. It looks like a ship, just with wheels though, doesn't it really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the actual, the hull shape, but I could understand, that's me, it's just space engineers for you, you just call everything a ship for some reason, it's probably because they call that in the, the item. So, right, fire that thing up, let's get it spinning around. So you've got your camera on the bottom, you've got your, how many turrets is that in there? Uh, seven, by, seven by four. Oh. So a nice bit of firepower. And how quickly can you access it, or oh, quite quickly? So with this, you've got full tilting. You've not ever accidentally sprayed your own ship, have you? Um, no, I usually look the motion of the actual uh, setup so that I can't tilt too far down. I mean, you can do it. I could shoot you right now. Right, hold on. But that would be that would be a bad thing. Right. So I've set up a little uh, rover over there to the right. Um, yep. So have, has you, have you ever fired this with one person on it while the other person is driving, or doesn't it function like that? game won't allow you to do it. It keeps saying that somebody else has control of the ship. Okay, so give us a quick shred on that small craft anyway. Let's see what it does. Do. So there we go. Very quickly disintegrates the ship. And, and I can imagine the frustration on if someone comes up to you in a small rover and they just disintegrate. Give us a few more shots in our direction. Yeah, that is, that is scary. Absolutely beautiful. Should we take this up for a high speed sort of run? Sure. See what sort of speed we can get up to. And as this thing's moving around, you, I can walk around in it, can't I, and, and move about without Yeah, yeah, too you much should issue. be able to. Just strap myself in the seat just in case, or, or do you advise? No, it should be fine. Right, so if we just fly across the terrain and keep ourselves moving, we'll be able to see the speed of this. And what I found amazing about it was, number one, its off-road capability, but number two, how quick it could get to 100 metres a second. So if I turn my hood back on, we're already at 13, 14, 15 metres a second. Um, do, you, do you have a limit on it, Wizard, that you particularly stick to, or do you just let it go flat out? Uh, 200k, usually, unless it gets really bad, and then I'll knock it down to maybe 60. I mean, do you have you, you have you been chased much in this, or...? No, not really. Normally there's not much left to be chased by. So we're up to 50. Hit. Oh, big jump. Wow, yeah, look at that, it, and, it, and it survived it fine, did it? Yep. Look at that crater! Oh, it's doing really well. So any so any at time, what's your sort of slow down speed or is there any parts of the terrain that you would particularly want to avoid, so anything steep perhaps? If I've got the speed, um, it's just the angle that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And what, Obviously, and, 
And what would be what would be your advice to people that are setting up the wheels, for instance, in configuration? Um, it depends on the weight of the actual craft that you that you're trying to build. The heavier this thing gets, the suspension needs to get tougher, tougher. Um, as you approach high speed, you will need to increase your um, strength. Ride heights always at a maximum. Friction of the wheels, however, I tend not to have that 100%. I tend mm -hmm. to have it hovering around 60-ish. And the reason for that is because if I need to, um, I can do an emergency stop and it'll slide rather than actually just coming to a dead halt and maybe risk flipping the rover. Wow, so we're getting into like, a bit more rough terrain here. Yeah, so, I mean, this would be the time where I slow down. Okay, but it's amazing uh, that you could make that mistake and come in pretty hot and, you know, still be alright, because another rover there would have flipped or just smashed itself up. Well, the nice thing about mixing grids with large and small is the mass. This thing's not light. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, because because of the weight and the centre of mass and the balance of the object, all the, all the weight is quite low down and the wheelbase is quite wide, so it's quite stable. So you're not going to be rolling anytime soon. Yeah, it is. I like that. I like you've got a wide wheelbase, low centre of gravity. There's a lot of thought gone into that design here. So to bring this one to a conclusion, is there anything else you wanted to cover on the Rover Wizard or give some extra tips for people building? Yeah, uh, on the stay Mad away Max from it if you see it. <laughs> stay away from it if you see it. So to bring this to a conclusion, if you're playing on the Mad Max server, keep a lookout for Wizard. But at the same time, make sure you're naming your grids. It helps out the admins and we can keep the server as clean as possible. So stay safe out there on the wasteland and good luck.